This is a balloon car. It demonstrates jet propulsion. The engine here is the elastic rubber of the inflated balloon. The propeller is the blowing air from the deflating balloon. Jet propulsion is a thrust produced by passing of stream of air or water in the opposite direction to the direction of motion. In this case, it is air. In order to demonstrate how the car works, we will inflate the balloon. This car is very light. The inflated balloon has a nozzle with a closed cap. Because of the elastic properties of the balloon, when we open the nozzle, the air rushes out in this direction. However, the jet propulsion is pushing the car in the opposite direction. Just like so. This car can also help to demonstrate Newton's third law. It states, when the first body, the balloon, exerts force on second body, the screen, the second body simultaneously exerts force on the first body. This means that both forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Therefore, the car does not move. This kit consists of several parts. The base, the parts for the wheels, the strips for the axles, the axles, the balloon, the mount plate for the balloon, the mount plate for the screen, the screen. We also have the bracket to hold the balloon in place. The very important part is the nozzle with the cap. We also have a number of other parts to aid with the assembly. To begin, we are going to assemble this rigid base that consists of three plates. Take these three plates Remove the adhesive backing first from this plate Glue the top and the middle plates together Do the same on this strip Remove the adhesive backing and stick it to the center plate, just like so. Press. This part is now ready. Now we will be making our wheels. Every wheel consists of three parts. The middle, the thinner disc, and the two thicker discs on both sides of it. These are hubs. They add thickness to our wheels. To help us assemble, we will use this simple device. First, take one hub and place it on the pin, adhesive side up. Remove the adhesive backing. Place the large disc on top. Press down. Remove adhesive backing from the second hub. And place it on the pin over the larger disc, adhesive side down. Press firmly. Now we can remove the finished wheel from the pin. The other three wheels are assembled the same way. Next, we need to attach the axle plates to our base. We have one long and one short axle plates. Remove the adhesive backing and place the long plate approximately 1.5 inches or 4 to 5 centimeters from the end. Like so. Make two holes in the base, using the holes on the axle plate as your guide. Insert two clips.
Now the strip won't fall off. The shorter strip is attached the same way, the same distance from the other end. Remove tape backing, glue it on like so. Make two holes. and insert two clips. Now we need to put our wheels on the axles. We will take some beads. First we need to place a bead on the tip of the first axle. You can use the small hammer. Now you can put the wheel on the axle. Again you can use the hammer. Now slowly and carefully slide the wheel down. Keep your fingers close to the wheel. We need to put one more bead on the other side of the wheel in order to prevent the wheel from falling apart. You can slide the bead down with the help of the rigid tube. Remember again to hold your fingers close to the bead. The half of the axle is now ready. Insert it into the middle channel of the strip and check that it spins with ease. It is time to put the second wheel on. First, place the bead, with the help of the tube slide it down. Make sure there is a gap between the bead and the axle strip wall. This will allow the axle to spin freely. Now we will put on the wheel. Use the hammer to help you. To avoid breaking the axle, keep your fingers close to the wheel while inserting. And the last bead goes here. We can check now if the wheels spin freely. Next, we will repeat the same steps with the other set of wheels. We will take the smaller axle and four beads. First, we'll put the bead. Then the wheel. And lastly, the bead again. Check if the wheel is straight. Now we can insert the half axle into the axle strip. Again, check if it spins freely. One more bead is placed here. Once again, don't forget to leave the gap. The last wheel and the last bead. Now we will attach the balloon mount piece to the car. Remove the adhesive backing and attach it to the base, approximately 3 inches or 10 centimeters from the end of the car where the shorter axle is located. Make two holes using the pre-drilled holes on this piece as your guide. And 
Now insert two clips. Next we will attach the screen holder. It goes on the same end with the shorter axle. Again, remove the adhesive backing and stick the holder piece to the base of the car. Make two holes and insert two clips. Now we need to mount our engine, the balloon. Insert the nozzle into the balloon. Use the elastic to secure the nozzle in place. With the open nozzle, insert the balloon into its holder. Make sure the nozzle is inserted all the way. Just like so. It is better that the cap of the nozzle is turned down. It is time to attach the bracket that will support the inflated balloon. Remove the adhesive backing Attach it to the base approximately 3 to 4 inches or 10 centimeters from the end with the longer axle. Again, make two holes using the holes on this piece as your guide. Insert two last clips. The balloon car is ready. To test the Newton's third law, we will put the screen in this position. When it is turned this way, the car will run because the jet of air released pushes it forward. If it is turned this way, the car will not move because there are two equal but opposite forces that cancel each other.